Okay, so let's see if your algebra skills are strong enough to solve this problem. Now, the great thing about this problem is that even if you only know some basic math and a little bit of algebra, you should still be able to get the right answer. Okay, so here is the problem. We have x minus x squared over x squared minus x, and this entire thing is equal to one of these over here. Okay, so we do have a multiple choice question, and let's take a look at our answers. So A is zero, B is one, C is negative one, and D is X over two. All right, so if you have an answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll share the correct solution in just one second. Then of course, I'm gonna solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we start, my name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you're frustrated with math, or if you really want to understand the subject, then check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so one more time, here is the problem. We have x minus x squared over x squared minus x. Now, here is a bit of a, a bit of a clue for those of you that might be a little bit rusty in algebra. So this x here is what we call a variable, but it simply just represents a number, and it's the same number. So if you think of the problem in these terms, well, that should really kind of give you a good hint on selecting the correct answer. All right, so what is the right answer? Well, the correct answer is C, which is negative one. All right, now, if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and an A plus, congratulations. But if you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm totally lost. Well, no big deal. I'm gonna teach you how to solve the problem right now. Okay, so here is our uh, problem. Now, the first thing that we want to observe is that we have a multiple choice question here and never, ever leave a math question blank. Of course, this is really important for those of you that still have to take math exams and uh, test, right? So if you see a problem and you're like, hey, I don't know how to do this promise due to math, man. Well, just take a guess, right? So, you know, you might be like, well, let me see here. And a lot of you could actually have guessed the correct answer, but did it in a wrong way. So what am I talking about? So you might be saying, well, there's an X squared here. There's another X squared here. So maybe what I need to do is cross cancel these. And then I have an X over a negative X. So if you know some basic math, this is positive. This is negative. So maybe the answer is like negative one because these are the same uh, values, right? X over X. So if you kind of reason through this way and selected C as negative one, well, in fact, you, got, you have the right answer. You got the right answer, but uh, your math was wrong, right? So this particular problem, you can actually uh, do it in the wrong way and still end up with the uh, right answer, right? So the main point is, you know, never leave a question blank. So again, if you did this problem in this manner by cross canceling these X's or maybe cross canceling these X's and, you know, kind of selected this, well, congratulations again, you got the uh, answer right, but your math is wrong because you cannot cross cancel these X's, right? So let me go ahead and uh, tell you what I'm talking about. So let's uh, take a look at this problem, X plus Y over X. So if you kind of use this logic here, right, you might say, well, maybe we can cross cancel these X's. I mean, they look really, you know, kind of nice, right? Like this X should be able to cross cancel with this X. So maybe this entire thing is equal to Y. Well, this is a very, very common algebra mistake and it's totally wrong, right? Because X represents a number. So this number would be like the same number down here in the denominator. So if we look at this same kind of setup, with numbers, we have three plus two or X plus Y. Y is another number different than this number, okay? But this number is the same as the number down in the denominator, right? So three plus two over three is uh, effectively an equivalent problem to this algebraic situation right here. So what is three plus two over three? Well, if we apply the same logic and we cross cancel these X's right here, well, someone might say, well, I could just cross cancel these threes and our answer is two. Well, that is wrong, okay? Three plus two over three is not equal to two. Three plus two over three is what? Well, we gotta add three plus two, that's five over three. Okay, so you can see this is wrong. 
Now, the reason why a lot of people confuse this is because they forget that you can only cross cancel factors. So if we separate these things by multiplication, well, now we have a different situation, right? Now, these are factors, and factors are, again, things that we um, uh, can do with a product, right? So for example, 10, factors of 10 are two times five. So if numbers or variables are separated by a multiplication sign, well, then you have factors. So if you have like factors, well, here, indeed, you can cross cancel, right? It's just like we have here, because three times two is six, six over three is two, but we can cross cancel. All right, so again, if you kind of reason through and you're like, well, here, I can just cross cancel these Xs, these are separated by uh, minus signs, not multiplication signs. So let's go ahead and talk about how we can solve this problem using basic math and algebra. All right, so as I indicated, uh, this variable X represents a number. Now, what we can do here is just plug in a number, okay, for X and just kind of simplify this big fraction and see what we come up with. Now, what number should we use? Well, if you think about this, if you use maybe a simple number like X is equal to one, well, that's not good. Matter of fact, I'll start off with a better number, a more simpler number, if you will. And uh, let's say X is equal to zero. So if we, if we replace, excuse me, these X's with zero, we're gonna have zero minus zero in the denominator of a fraction. You cannot divide anything by zero. So if you don't believe me, just go, in, go into your calculator and go three divided by zero, you're going to see that is an error, right? So we don't wanna use um, zero for X's because we're gonna come up with an error. Now, if we use one, okay, well, that's still gonna give us zeros here, right? Because one squared is what? Well, that's one times one. So our denominator here will be one squared minus one. Of course, that is going to be equal to zero. So these are not good values to select. So let's uh, go ahead and pick another value that's nice and simple. So maybe like X is equal to two. And in uh, this particular value, we're not gonna run into the situation where we end up with zero in the denominator. So just as a review, when it comes to fractions or divisions, or division, excuse me, you can have zero in the numerator. Zero divided by three is zero, but uh, three divided by zero is undefined, right? So this is a no-no in mathematics. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in uh, uh, two for X, right? Because X just represents a number. Again, uh, we don't want to um, use one or zero. So when we pl plug in uh, two for X, well, let's go ahead and do the simple math, right? So again, we're not talking about very complicated algebra. So we're going to evaluate this expression for X is equal to two, meaning that we're going to plug in two for these X's. Now, when you plug in a value, a numeric value for a variable in algebra, always use parentheses. So when I plug in this two into all these X's, you're going to come up with this situation right here, right? So it's going to be two minus two squared over two squared minus two. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the math. And the math is pretty simple. Two minus two squared, two squared is what? Well, that's just uh, two times two, which of course is four. So our numerator numerator is two minus four, and our denominator is going to be four minus two. So we have to be very careful here. But uh, if we do this basic math, we're gonna have what? Two minus four, which is the same thing as two plus a negative four. Now, again, assuming you know some basic math and some basic algebra and your positive and negative numbers, uh, two minus four or two plus negative four, that's equal to negative two. Now four minus two down here in the denominator is equal to two. And now we have two divided by two, but uh, this two is negative. So we have a negative divided by a positive. So a negative divide, divided by a positive is going to be negative. So negative two divided by two is negative one, which of course is our answer over here. All right, so when we had this set up, uh, the correct answer is negative one. So remember, uh, X just represents a value. And in algebra, it's not a bad technique to simply re replace a variable with a value and kind of see what kind of a pattern, you know, or how it kind of works out when you plug in a number. That's actually a pretty good strategy in solving a lot of problems. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a uh, kind of algebraic technique to solve this same problem. But uh, before I do, 
I'm going to show you this, and that is a request to support this YouTube channel. Now, uh, my channel is all about trying to make math clear and understandable and interesting. And, uh, you know, I try to put in, you know, a lot of effort into my videos, right? So I don't want to waste anyone's time. But, uh, you know, what I want to do, though, is make a valuable piece of content that can really benefit a lot of people. Now, I'm trying to reach these people, but the only way I can do so on YouTube is to get people to subscribe to my channel. And if you're going to subscribe, hit that uh, bell notification as well, because that really does, you know, allow you to uh, see my latest videos. Now, if you need help with math, if you really want to learn from me, you got to check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. But uh, let's go ahead and get back to the problem. And I'm going to show you how to solve this um problem using another technique, and that is algebraic factoring. Now, one of the most uh, important skills in all of mathematics, especially uh, algebra, is your ability to factor. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how well you can factor. So we have x minus x squared over x squared minus x, and uh, let's go ahead, and go ahead and factor the numerator and denominator. So uh, what we want to do is factor out what we have uh, here, or what we call the greatest common factor. Okay, so we can factor out an x in the numerator, okay, because, and this x is the, what we call, again, the greatest common factor. So this is going to be, let's just go ahead uh, and focus on the numerator right now. So this is going to be x uh, times parentheses 1 minus x, because this x times this 1 is x, and this x times that x is x squared. So if you're never sure about, or if you're unsure about your factoring, you can always multiply your factoring back to see if you can, you know, uh, get back to the correct answer. Now, of course, you got to know how to multiply, but uh, when you're factoring, you can always double check your work. All right, so this is how we can uh, uh, factor the numerator and the denominator. We can also factor it, factor out, excuse me, a greatest common factor of x, and that would be x parentheses x minus one parentheses, right? Because x times x is x squared, and this x times this one is x. Okay, so at this point, you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, you know, I can see that these x's are the same, and again, these are separated by multiplication, right? So these are factors, so we can cross-cancel these x's at this point, okay? But that's not going to really help us out because these two things are not the same. All right, because 1 minus x looks pretty close to x minus 1, but these are not the same factors. This is 1 uh, minus or 1 plus a negative x, and this is x plus a negative 1. You see, this is a positive 1, this is a negative 1, this is a negative x, and this is a positive x. So these factors are not the same. Well, we can fix this up, but you got to uh, keep in mind this little, I don't want to say it's a secret, but it's a method in algebra a technique that you definitely need to understand. Okay, so here is our situation at this point, right? So we factor this out. This looks pretty good, but we're having a problem with these two factors right here. Now, it would be pretty awesome if these were the same factors. Well, we can actually fix this up so we are looking at uh, the same factors. And what we need to do is factor out a negative one or a negative sign. So let me go ahead and show you that right now. So this is a little uh, strategy or technique that comes in super handy handy in algebra. So let's take a look at our denominator, right? So we have x squared minus x. Now, if I think of the factors this way, a negative x, right? Uh, now, if I have a negative x, okay, if I'm thinking I'm going to factor out a negative x, then what do we need to have inside of the parentheses to get back to this? Well, we need another negative because a negative times a negative is positive. We have a positive x squared here. So negative x times negative x is a positive x squared. And negative x times a positive 1 gets us back to a negative x. So we can factor uh, x squared minus x like this. And this is much better for us because these two factors right here are now the same. All right now, it may not be so easy to identify that because this is 1 plus negative x or negative x plus 1. And that's what we have down here, negative x plus 1. So we have the same factors. Okay, so here now is our problem. 
So these factors are the same, 1 plus negative x or negative x plus 1. So these two factors we can cross cancel, and we can cross cancel these x's as well, right? So this x can cross cancel with this x, or x divided by x, and this is positive, this is negative, this is all going to equal negative 1. Okay, so two different approaches you could take to solve this problem, but uh, for those of you that are studying algebra, uh, definitely like uh, first or second year algebra, you definitely got to understand how to factor out a negative sign uh, because it comes up uh, in a lot of different factoring situations. But as I indicated in the beginning of this video, even if you don't know a lot of algebra, but if you have some pretty good basic math skills, well, hopefully you, you, you know, you can kind of see that you can reason through and still figure out the answer to this problem. Okay, so that is going to be it for this particular video. Now, here is the thing. Now, if you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I actually learned something. Well, that is fantastic. But uh, in order for you to really kind of build a math skill, you got to practice, right? So watching these videos are great. But if you really, really want to improve in math, you got to practice, practice, practice. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.